Who, who, who? I'm a hillbilly. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Just Carve Rob. And... I've had, I asked the question if anybody wanted to learn how I do my style of leafs. And I've had a couple guys that said, yeah, we want to learn. So, I'm going to take a little break from the stick right this second. And I'm going to show you how I carve a leaf, okay? It's a leaf that I drew out on a piece of paper. And then I use uh, the old Elmer's glue stick to stick it on the wood. So, and I drew these out and I copied them in different patterns that I like. So I've got a, a bunch of these. And when I get down to my last copy, I'll copy more. So I don't got to sit here and redraw leaves all the time. This is the easiest way to do a stick, guys. Trying to draw on this round surface is a nightmare, I'll tell you. I've, I've done it, and when I first started doing walking sticks, that's the way I did it. And believe me, it's a royal pain in the tuchus. So if you can't draw, go online. Um, find yourself a pattern that you like. Coke. Find yourself a pattern that you like, <clears throat> print it out, and then you can either shrink it or enlarge it to the size that you like for your stick. So that's, that's basically it, okay? Now what I'm using here is a carbide aluminum cutter okay come on focus you there so that's what I'm using to cut this leaf out and it does have the cutters on the end you can see them so that you can plunge in because when you cut your leaf out you want it to be on to be straight up and down on it you draw you don't want to be off on an angle because you'll either undercut your leaf or you'll either undercut it this way or overcut it that way. So what everybody knows what I usually use to cut out leaves is the high speed cutter because the high speed SCM carving tool. And the reason I do that is because number one I can regulate my depth by how deep I go with the bit and number two it's just much faster just much faster to cut it out over the Dremel but I know a lot of you guys don't have those high-speed cutters um, the other way to go is with the electric low-speed cutter but it's got the same RPMs as the Dremel the only the big deal with those is that they have a power cord instead of a flex cable so it gives you more mobility okay and that's a big thing when you're doing little things is you need as much flexibility in your in your hand piece as you can get. So, so uh, Jordy just bought one. Just bought a high speed cutter or low speed, low speed. And, um, a lot of them are for dental work, or they have them as uh, being for lab work. So. Uh, so I guess you know those can, those run as much as uh, the high speed. The high speed cutter uh, SCM that I have, I think I paid right around four hundred dollars for it. But uh, you can say SCM stands behind their product. So that's in there too. They stand behind their product. Okay, so let's. Uh, Fire up the noisemakers. 
the uh, Dremel and the, the dust collection system. And we will get into this. And I hope my hands don't get in the way. I'm using the overhead camera rig in case you're interested. Uh, that I made. So I guess we'll go ahead and get this done so I can get back on my stick. Okay, so with that being said, let's fire everything up. All right, guys, here we go. <clears throat> We're using our Dremel with the, I guess it would be an eighth inch carbide aluminum. It's a square ended cutter. Uh, it also has cutting edges on the face. And what we're doing now is we're going to trace the leaf out using this tool. It's just hard to get it where my hands are not going to be in the way when we do this. Um, but basically, we're just staying just outside the line. And we're trying to regulate our depth. It's been forever since I have used a Dremel to do leaves the most important thing with your leaves guys is lay out your pattern how you want them before you even cut the first one out because that's going to be important as to your feathering and when we get we'll get to the feathering here uh, we'll change over to a flame burr aluminum carbide cutter but it's a flame burr uh, to get down there and feather all this back you can see we're just tracing around our leaf and we're trying to stay off of our line you know you want to stay off your line just a little bit maybe a 30 second a little less I mean you want to get close but you don't want to be on it either okay now you can see we cut the depth in and we're down there we actually went kind of deep on this over an eighth of an inch I'm sure Okay, we're, now we're changing up our cutters. We're going with the flame burr. I'll show it to you here in a second. Hurry, Rob, hurry. Okay, there it is. So that's what I'm using is the carbide flame burr. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, we're cutting, we're going to cut in our, the veins of our leaves. Now you can do this the other way too, guys. Um, I have done it. It takes much longer, but instead of cutting them in, you actually make them look like the stick part of the of the leaf. Um, I found out that they were they look just as well if you cut them in, and it's a lot quicker. Now you can do it however you want to do it. I've done it both ways, and I can tell you, it takes much much longer to cut those little veins in. And, uh, <clears throat> to make it look like a stick so you can go the way you want to go with it uh, for this demonstration we are just cutting them in and now we're feathering the leaf back and this this is a ripper believe it or not this uh this flame burr that aluminum flame burr carbide aluminum flame burr uh is a ripper and it came in a set from I think I bought this set from Amazon. I don't know. I think it was like 15 bucks. And it came with uh, different cutters. It came with, I think there was two different style flame burrs. And then it came with the real pointy ones. And it came with that flat tipped one that I showed you. So basically all I'm doing is uh, getting down inside there reshaping the leaf a little bit because like I said we stayed outside or we tried to stay outside our line so that's uh that's important that you want to stay outside your line for the cleanup because you're gonna have to come back and clean it up this isn't a one a one pass and done type deal you'll be coming back with your uh flame burr or whatever burr works the best for you and cleaning it cleaning the leaf back up um now remember, this isn't uh, you know. There's there's nothing saying that I'm doing this the right way or the wrong way, but you guys, uh, once you get into it, you'll figure out what works for you. But this is a starting point. This will give you a rough idea of where you got to go or where you want to go. 
Now remember guys, this is just me. This is how I do it. Not everybody carves leaves like I carve leaves. Um, so this is just the way I do it. Right, wrong, or indifferent. It's the way I do it. Now you can see how wide I've made that, uh, where I feathered that back. Now if I had another leaf right next to that, I couldn't do that. But then again, I wouldn't need to do that because there's another leaf there. I just have to take out what's in the middle. So when you lay your, lay your leaves out, try to leave yourself enough space for your Dremel bit to get in between them, okay? Otherwise, you're going to end up with a situation where you're going to have to buy a special burr or something to get down in there. Now remember, you got uh, I've bought other collets for my Dremel handpiece. I've bought the ones that hold the uh, the 1.6 burrs. Uh, I've got one that's the what is it 2.53 these uh, 332nd burrs. Um, my problem is I would be using a 332nd burr on some of this flame burr, little tiny one. Uh, but mine I have used to death, and I did find some, so I ordered them, but they're not here yet. And now what we're doing is we're going in and we're shaping the leaf, okay? We're feathering it back both ways from that uh, where we cut our leaf vein in, okay? And as you cut the leaf veins down, you're going to have to keep retracing your vein lines, just to let you know. Because you want the veins, the vein lines to be the lowest spot on your stick. Now a trick that I do when I, I go to finish these is down in the valleys where the vein lines are I'll take uh, brown or black paint and I will uh, with a really fine paintbrush and run it down through there before I do any of the staining or, or uh, painting or whatever I'm going to do with it and, and or if I don't want to try painting it in I'll take my wood burner and run it down in there, down the vein, and it burns them in, it makes them a little deeper, and it also makes them black. So you can skip the, uh, you can skip the paint part if you want to. But on the upside, is if you use your, we use a wood burner, it also makes those vein lines deeper so your paintbrush will follow, will track right down it for you. Plus it, uh, burning it helps your paint from traveling, or your stain. I found that out by accident one time. I had just got a, a wood burner, and I was wood burning, and I decided to stain something. And uh, anybody that's ever dealt with oil-based stains knows you can put a drop at one end of that leaf, and it will travel. The wood will suck it like a straw right down to the other end. But for some reason, uh, when you burn it, I don't know if it's because it sears. If you look at wood, look at it like it's a bunch of straws, Okay all grouped together little tiny straws and when the the stain hits it it runs it's it sucks it you can watch it it suck it right down the wood right down the grain of the wood so by burning it i think that's kind of like cauterizing your straws or cutting your straws off so the stain it, it hits that stick that hits that burn mark and it, if it's burnt good if it's lightly burnt not so much but if it's burnt good uh it'll stop it boom dead right there doesn't go any further so that's why most of my stuff you see me make I always go back with the wood burner even if I'm gonna paint it I'll always go back with the wood burner and burn it okay uh, yeah we're now we're we're shit we're still shaping these leaves up um, did I switch Dremels yet we got two Dremels now guys and one of them's loaded with the uh, pretty much dedicated to the diamond tip the diamond flame burr and I think, yeah, I think that's what we're using right there is a diamond flame burr. I might have ran my mouth right through the, because I, I know I showed it on camera. I might have ran my mouth right through it. Sorry. But yeah, we switched for the for the finishing part of it. I always switch, uh, switch over to that diamond flame burr. Okay. Okay, guys. So that's basically how I do leaves. Now, I'm not going to spend all the time to detail it out. You know, keep sanding these bumps down and that. But you can see we go in pretty deep where the vein of the leaf is and then we feather it up and feather it up and feather it each way um, that way there 
it comes out looking like a really good leaf so all these areas here I would go back in and clean up with the uh, that last bit I did was with the flame burr diamond cleaned all those areas up I would go back in and clean up all in here and get down in there undercut this leaf a little bit with it so it gives it an edge now when you're putting down your leaves lay out your pattern so that you know how deep you can go. You can see this one's in there about, I'd say over an eighth of an inch. You don't need to go that deep with leaves, but uh, it's been a long time since I've cut a leaf with a Dremel. Just because the high speed carver is just so much faster at it. Now you can see these leaves are not that deep. They're, oh, probably eighth of an inch, maybe in some spots a little less, okay? This is the stick we're working on now. But you can see these leaves are nowhere as near as deep as this leaf. Um, and that's due to I have not cut a leaf with a Dremel in forever. I found out uh, when I was doing gun stocks that the cleaner cut you can make, which that high speed tool makes a super clean cut okay so i really don't have that much cleanup to go back and clean up like i would with this leaf but i know not everybody can run out and buy a 400 hundred dollar air tool and the only reason i got it is because i was charging five six hundred bucks to do a gun stock and i did one for a guy out in pennsylvania and as soon as I got the check for the uh, gun stock, I ordered my high speed tool. And once I got that, oh baby, I'll tell you, it's like butter. Cuts much, much easier. So, but the Dremel, I've done it with a Dremel. Before I had a Dremel, I did it with a knife, an X-Acto knife I used and uh, diamond files so you know you can get the results by using nothing but a knife believe me I have done it so there it is guys wow 30 minutes it took us 30 minutes from the time we started this to now so a half hour to do that leaf so I hope this helps and if you have any questions leave them in the comments and I'll answer them okay so remember, just carve, carve awesome, be awesome, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Share, subscribe, and like. Hit that bell so you know when I'm doing a video, posting it, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.